Hello and welcome to the news on Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassadors of Egypt, Slovakia, Zambia, and Portugal. The Egyptian ambassador Yasser Mohammed Ahmed Shaban arrived at Sakhir Palace. He was received by the head of the royal protocol, and official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Egypt to Bahrain, and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The Slovakian ambassador Dr. Igor Hajdusek arrived at Sakhir Palace. He was received by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Slovakia to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The Zambian ambassador Ibrahim Mumba arrived at the palace. He was received by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Zambia to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. Portuguese ambassador Dr. Luis de Almeida Ferraz arrived at the palace. He was received by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. He 
then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Portugal to Bahrain, and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. His Majesty the King praised the close relations linking Bahrain and countries of the ambassadors and the progress witnessed in all fields. He wished them success in assuming their diplomatic duties to further enhance the multilateral relations. For their part, the ambassadors conveyed to His Majesty the King the greetings of their leaders and their wishes of good health and happiness to His Majesty the King and further progress and prosperity to Bahrain. The ceremony was attended by the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the Minister of Royal Court, Minister of Follow-up at the Royal Court, and the Head of Royal Protocol, and the Assistant of Foreign Affairs.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace. The President and members of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence Board of Trustees. In cooperation with This is Bahrain on the occasion of the UN International Day for Tolerance, in the presence of the former President of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Harith Salajic, and the High Representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, Miguel Moratinos, to greet His Majesty on the occasion of their visit to the Kingdom.
أهل البلاد المفدة حفظكم الله ورعاكم وسدد على طريق الحق خطاكم شرف عظيم يا سيدي أن يتجدد اللقاء بجلالتكم مع احتفال مملكة البحرين أرض التسامح والتعايش السلمي باليوم العالمي للتسامح والذي يتزامن هذه السنة مع مناسبة تاريخية عزيزة على قلب كل بحريني هو الاحتفال بمرور مئة عام على التعليم النظامي لتأتي فعالياتنا تحت شعار نتسامح لنتعلم نتسامح لنعمل نتسامح لنكون سيدي يا صاحب الجلالة خطوات على الأرض سارت وهمم مع هامات السحاب تلاقت لتجسد رؤية جلالتكم الملكية السامية ما يميز عهدكم الميمون من إعلاء قل نظيره على وجه هذه البسيطة لمعاني الوئام ودعم ازدهار الأوطان وبناء السلام في سعي سام وجبار لجلالتكم لمحو مصطلحات الكراهية والعنف والتعصب من قاموس البشرية الكلمة السامية لحضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه. Then His Majesty the King delivered the following speech. أيها الإخوة والأخوات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. يسعدنا أن يتجدد اللقاء بجمعكم المبارك وأن نرحب بالأخ الكريم. فخامة الرئيس حارث شاكرين له حضوره معنا اليوم ومتمنين له طيب الإقامة في البحرين وننتهز هذه الفرصة الطيبة بالإعراب عن ارتياحنا وتقديرنا لما تشهده أعمالكم من نشاط متواصل في الداخل والخارج وبتعاون مثمر بين المؤسسات المعنية للتعريف بتجربتنا البحرينية بتقاليدها المتميزة والمتحضرة في التعامل المجتمعي المتسامح والمتآلف والمرن وبناءها المدني العريق تحت ظل دولة القانون والمؤسسات المنظمة للحقوق والحامية للحريات واستطعنا من خلال هذه التجربة الرائدة ولله الحمد أن نحافظ على استقرار وطننا ووحدة شعبنا المعروف بتحضره وتمسكه بالقيم الإنسانية المرسخة للسلام والوئام والقائمة على احترام كافة الشعوب والأديان وهي قيم نابعة من جوهر شريعتنا الإسلامية السمحة حضور الكريم يحتفي العالم سنوياً في هذا الشهر بأهمية التسامح في حياة الشعوب كوسيلة أساسية لتحقيق السلام ولبقاء الإنسانية واستمرار تحضرها ونفخر بالقول هنا بأننا لم نستشعر قط بأن نهج التسامح في بلدنا هو نهج مفتعل أو ممارسة طارئة بل نجده متجسدا كسلوك حضاري وممارسة متأصلة وتؤكد العديد من الشواهد المادية والمعنوية المتمثلة في التعايش السلمي بين أصحاب الديانات المختلفة وفي التوافق والانسجام بين الثقافات المتعددة وعبر مبادئ دستورية ثابتة وقوانين ملزمة تنبذ كافة أشكال الكراهية والعنف والتمييز 
ونجد بأن الانفتاح والتفاعل الحضاري لمجتمعنا قد أسهم بشكل كبير في تقوية قدرتنا على التواصل الإنساني فكانت البحرين ولا تزال موطن حاضن للتعددية ومركز للتلاقي الثقافي وللتعايش الديني والإنساني وسنستمر بعون الله وبمساندة الجميع في حمل ونشر رؤيتنا ورسالتنا الداعية للسلام وللتقريب بين الشعوب على اختلاف ثقافاتهم ومعتقداتهم إيمانا والتزاما منا بقيم المحبة والتسامح والتآلف والتي نادى لها وعمل بها رسولنا الكريم عليه أفضل الصلاة والسلام والله ولي التوفيق والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته صاحب الجلالة على امتداد تاريخ طويل من الانفتاح والتنوع الثقافي وتمازج الأديان والحضارات يقف نموذجكم الفريد في حب الآخر وتقبل المختلف شامخاً في عالم تتلاطم فيه أمواج من الانغلاق والإقصاء ونبذ التعددية ليكون نموذجكم يا صاحب الجلالة منارة والضاءة ترشد سفن الشعوب والمجتمعات التي تعاني من ويلات الحروب والصراعات إلى بر الأمان كلمة السيد ميغيل أنخيل موراتينوس ممثل الأمم المتحدة السامية The representative for the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations delivered the following speech Your Excellencies, Distinguished Guest, Religious Leader, Young People in this ceremony Al-Salam, Al-Lakum, Ramatu, Alava, Banakatu. It's a great honor, Your Majesty, to be in your audience in my capacity as UN official, leading an organization whose mission and objective resonate with the remarkable work that Your Majesty has been leading here in the Kingdom of Bahrain for years, promoting tolerance, peaceful coexistence, and promoting cultural diversity in religious pluralism have been key priorities to the Kingdom of Bahrain, thanks to Your Majesty, vision, and for working thinking approach. You recognize early on that the wealth of diverse religions, culture, and languages in the kingdom enriches the colorful mosaic of the Bahraini society. So you embrace it, nurture it, and strengthen its core. You saw that diversity informed human life in reaching it rather than threatening it. This is Bahrain, therefore. It is true demonstration of a way of life as it should be. It is no coincidence. The Kingdom of Bahrain is home to hundreds of mosques, more than a dozen churches, the oldest synagogue in the Gulf region, a Western Hindu, Sikh, and Buddhist temple. These houses of worship serve the multi ethnic, multi faith, and multicultural community that have lived in Bahrain decades ago. The Bahrain Declaration reflect the reality which is emphasized on freedom of religion, denouncing all form of violent extremism and act for, of terror and hate speech leading to excitement. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence translates these principles into action. I see many synergy in the work we do at the United Nations Alliance of Civilization and the Center particularly in the area of education and promoting interface dialogue. Your Majesty, Your Excellencies, two days ago we celebrate the International Day of Tolerance. 
The day is a reminder of UN, the chart of the founding father of the United Nations, which referred to we the peoples of the United Nations, who are determined to practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as neighbors. Those universal values are humanistic values inherent in all faiths. It's today complex world where conflicts are multiplying and people whose identities are defined by religion, culture, ethnicity continue to be besieged by hatred. We indeed need to commit ourselves every day of this principle. A holistic approach is the way to respond to global challenges of this nature. Security measures will not suffice to stem up the scourge of terrorism, sectarianism, and racist rhetoric. We need to counter this false narrative with a true one that offers human solidarity and hope, a strengthening interface dialogue against bigotry and hate should guide our collective action. From the local community to cyberspace, the voices of inclusiveness, tolerance, and respect of the other must be heard. In preparation of the speech of today, Your Majesty, I draw inspiration for Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Magna Carta of all humankind, which states, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. All the prophet and religion messengers throughout history have preached a similar message of peace, love, and tolerance. For instance, the dignity of human being in Islam derived from our common humanity, regardless of race, creed, color, or gender. Islam viewed the world as a single family with global citizenship, the basis for cooperation and peaceful coexistence. Islam is a faith of tolerance, a faith of humanism that is important to recognize when we talk about Islam today. I quote from the Holy Quran, Surat al Huriyat. O mankind, we created you from a single pair of a male and a female and made you into nation and tribe that they may know each other. And these values are not limited to the scripture of these three monotheistic religions. They are cherished by all the world major religion and faith. Yet, in all corners of the world, we see an erosion of these universal values and growing social and cultural divides where tribalism, ethnic violence, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, hate speech, ultranationalism are in full swing. These atrocities continue to shock the conscience of humanity. This brings me to the United Nations Plan of Action to Safeguard Religious Society, which was my offer developed and was launched by UN Secretary General on 12 September. The plan came in response to the successful attack on religious sites in New Zealand, Sri Lanka, the US, and elsewhere. It was conceived as an action-oriented framework for action with suggested recommendations to support the state and relevant stakeholders in their effort to prevent possible attacks against religious sites and to be better prepared to safeguard religious sites and worshippers. A great emphasis is placed on the role of religious leaders and faith-based organization in the prevention segment of the plan. Given back Rain's successful model of peaceful coexistence, I hope that we can work together through the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence to take this plan forward to the implementation phase, particularly in the area of interface education and promotion of freedom of religion and belief. Your Majesty, Excellency, Distinguished Guest, the United Nations Alliance of Civilization derived and embraced the motto, many culture, one humanity. We work to promote intercultural, interreligious dialogue as a viable tool to achieve this goal. I be all truly believe and work for fulfilling the motto. We will succeed in transitioning from tolerance to a mobile human virtue, its acceptance and respect of the other as a noble human act. Let me conclude by quoting the Bible. Love your neighbor as yourself. No commandment is greater than this. Mark 1 to 9. 
and from the Torah, Talmud Shabbat 31. Ah, what is hateful to you, do not know, do to another. That is the whole Torah. With these inspiring words, I conclude my speech. I truly thank your majesty for your gracious welcome to me and your beautiful country. I also thank the King Hamad Global Center for Peace Cooperation to this hospitality. Thank you very much. سيدي صاحب الجلالة مشروعكم الإصلاحي عظيم بمرتكزاته سابق لعصره سرمدي برسالاته الإنسانية النبيلة حملتم على عاتقكم مهم جسام في سبيل أن يعم الخير والسلام جميع بني البشر لتكونوا أيدكم الله خير من يمثل الإسلام بتعاليمه السمحاء والأمة العربية بحضارتها العريقة متسلحين بمبادئ الوسطية والاعتدال وحرية التدين والإخاء بين جميع الحضارات والأديان كلمة السيدة بيتسي ماثيسون النائب الثاني لرئيس مجلس الأمناء بمركز الملك حمد العالمي للتعايش السلمي the Secretary General of the Federation of Foreign Communities in the Kingdom, Betsy Matthewson, also delivered a speech. We stand before your Majesty today with the deepest respect and pride. Respect for our beloved monarch and pride in all of your Majesty's many achievements, which have seen the Kingdom of Bahrain recognized as a pioneer and world leader in so many areas. One of these areas of pioneering success is education, and as Bahrain celebrates the 100-year anniversary of the first formal school, not only in Bahrain, but in the region, Your Majesty has called for more focus on education in the digital age and on youth empowerment to ensure Bahrain continues to lead the way in education. In answer to Your Majesty's inspiring call, today we are humbled to present to Your Majesty the fruits of the hard work and cooperation between the King Hamid Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence and This is Bahrain. Following on from the creation of the King Hamid Chair in Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence at Sapienza University in Rome, with its successful launch in 2018, and the first King Hamid Summer School in Rome in September this year, which saw young people from all around the world gather together to study Your Majesty's courageous and powerful words in the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration. We present to Your Majesty today the first group of participants of the new King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Program. The King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Program is affiliated with both Oxford and Cambridge Universities and delivered by the United Kingdom's leading training organization in this field, Faith in Leadership. Director and founder of Faith and Leadership, Mr. Krish Raval, has been awarded the Order of the British Empire Medal by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth for his dedication to education, and His Royal Highness Prince Charles endorses and encourages his organization's noble objectives. Your Majesty, over the course of one year, the participants progress through three modules taught here in Bahrain by visiting faculty from the United Kingdom. Participants are taught leadership skills that will enable them to excel in their studies, career, and throughout life as compassionate and caring individuals. Your Majesty, part of the pledge that King Hamid Fellows make is to give back to their country by mentoring other young people to share their knowledge and skills and to inspire others to embrace Your Majesty's vision. Your Majesty, since the launch of this first group of 20 participants of the King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Program, they have already mentored other young people during our United Nations International Day of Tolerance celebrations with the participation of over 1,000 students. Your Majesty, we are proud to announce that we have been overwhelmed by the response from our young people, and we have now received over 1,300 applications from youth who are eager to embrace Your Majesty's vision and become King Hamid Faith in Leadership Fellows. 
So in response to this unprecedented demand, preparations are being made to rapidly expand the capacity and reach of the King Hamid Faith and Leadership Fellows Program and ensure that we leave no one behind in our quest to serve the dreams and aspirations of all of our young people. Your Majesty, it is often said that young people are our future, but we know that Your Majesty's philosophy is that young people are our now. And so we must empower them now with the skills, knowledge, and confidence to take their place on the world stage today. Your Majesty, the King Hamid Global Center, and this is Bahrain, stand behind Your Majesty in this regard. And we pledge to continue to work tirelessly to create world-class education opportunities for the youth of Bahrain that will enable them to shine and make Your Majesty proud of our youth and their achievements. Your Majesty, in the words of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, a father gives his child nothing better than a good education. Your Majesty, as the father of our nation, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this most precious gift for your sons and daughters. May Allah continue to bless Your Majesty and all Your Majesty's wise, honorable, and compassionate leadership endeavors for the Kingdom of Bahrain and her dear people. Thank you, sir. Then a commemorative photo was taken of His Majesty the King and the first cohort of graduates of the King Hamad program for belief in youth leaders to promote the values of tolerance, who received accredited certificates from Oxford and Cambridge universities. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Athletics Association and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee and chairman of the high organizing committee of the 2019 Brave International Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa deputized the president of Bahrain Fighting Games Council and member of the Brave High Organizing Committee, His Highness Sheikh Salman bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, to attend the ceremony honoring the sponsoring and contributing companies and the heads of committees for BRAVE. His Highness Sheikh Khalid praised the role of the sponsors and contributing companies in supporting the event and hailed the efforts of the heads of com committees and members in ensuring the success of the event. His Highness added that the Kingdom recorded a new accomplishment through BRAVE Combat Week, which reflects the high status of the Kingdom on the international level. He praised the role of the Executive Committee, led by Muhammad Ali Qambar. Brave Combat, which is held under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, was organized by the Bahrain Martial Arts Federation in cooperation with Brave and the International Mixed Martial Arts Federation. The event included competitions of the 6th edition of the World Amateur Mixed Martial Arts Championship, the 29th edition of the Brave Mixed Mixed Martial Arts Championship and the first edition of the Khalid bin Hamad Global Mixed Martial Arts for Open Weight.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa deputized Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend the 28th Jewelry Arabia exhibition held with the participation of 561 exhibiting companies from 36 countries. His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the organizers of the exhibition and the participants, wishing the exhibition success in achieving its goals of boosting the jewelry industry. His Highness noted that the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and his patronage of the exhibition annually is one of the features of His Royal Highness's approach and vision in developing the industry of exhibitions and conferences. He stated that the exhibition succeeded in securing an outstanding status and achieving continuous success in attracting exhibitors and enthusiasts as a result of the patronage of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. He affirmed that the organizing of the exhibition for 28 years reflects the kingdom's advantages and competitive characteristics in light of the facilitations and incentives provided by the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. His Highness Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa toured the exhibition, expressing admiration for the distinguished exhibits and their elegance. He noted that the large number of participants and the increasing demand from the public asserted the status of the exhibition as one of the most important specialized exhibitions in the region. The Deputy Prime Minister also highlighted the Kingdom's outstanding history in the jewelry industry and its national competencies of skillful jewelry makers. His Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to the organizers, hailing their efforts in increasing the exhibition's status. For his part, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid bin Rashid Al Zayani, expressed appreciation and gratitude to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for patronizing the event, which reflects the government's keenness on attracting specialized global exhibitions.